that she's well known to many Canadians from such beloved television programs as Codco. And this hour has 22 minutes. She's won a staggering 18 Gemini Awards. She is from this province. Please welcome Mary Walsh. <laughs> Well, it's exciting to see you here. And I just live down the street. Do you live just down the street, really? Just down the street, yeah. Now, you look a lot more fresh-faced, and, uh, and you, got like, you look like you've got some rest, uh, as opposed to Jim Cuddy and Classified. You weren't up all night. No, Because you I actually live not. here, I actually so you live get here. it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never go to George Street. I, the last time I was on George Street, O'Keefe's Grocery was still there. And you could still get the Bay bus. The Fleet Line bus was there. That was George Street to me. <laughs> I, like, I like how you're looking at me as if I would know those references. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, O'Keeffe's. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. You were down there, right? <laughs> We've heard that your old 22 Minutes character, Mark De La Hunty, a.k.a. Mark the Princess Warrior, might become the subject of a movie. Would you... Is, is that true? Marg the movie. I've got the first draft done. I'm just starting work on the second draft. The basic story is Marg is going blind. <laughs> and when she was 16, she went to uh, Expo and she got knocked up. And she came, she went with the Mercy Choir singing at Expo. <laughs> and when she came back, of course, uh, you know, that, that thing happened where they took the baby. <laughs> you know, the mother her right. mother took the baby. She said, we're going to put that behind us and never think about it again. And Marg's whole life has been spent thinking that if she only had that baby, if only she could set eyes on that. So when she's going blind, she decides to set off across the country to try to find this child. But she has, her mother is, has Alzheimer's and has no clues. And so she sets off with her daughter. She does have a child, but she doesn't really pay that much attention to that child. It's the lost <laughs> child. At some dark point midway <laughs> through the movie, there is some indication that the child might be um, 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 Stephen Harper. But <laughs> but then it's not. <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, that sounds... Now, is this a re reality? Are we going to see this? Maybe? I hope so. I'm in second draft. So, I mean, you know, I'm doing it with Cinemaginaire. You know, those people who won the... Uh, uh, Denise Robert, she won an Oscar uh, with uh, Denny Arcand, yes. her husband, for uh, Barbarian Invasion. Yes. Yeah. I did another movie with them before. It didn't win an Oscar or anything. Maybe you haven't even heard of it, actually. Uh, it was called Young Trippy. <laughs> Back in the days when O'Keeffe's was still there. Huh? Shut up, it was not. It was only a couple of years ago. <laughs> I don't know when O'Keeffe's was there. I have no idea what that... So, uh, uh, now I know you get no, that. No, but George Street is this big place of now. Course. With bars yeah. and everybody's drinking It wasn't always there. that way? And no, 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 no. George, George Street was where the Bay buses left from, where you went out, you know, you went to Ruby's Snack Bar and, you know. But wait a but second, But I'm talking Hasn't about a hundred years ago. Oh. With, with you uh, right. So it, in in your lifetime, it's always been kind of a, no, a place of never. reverie we and music. We never drank on George Street when I was drinking. No, wouldn't be caught dead. There was only one bar on George Street, Christians, and I guess we would, would go to Christians sometimes, but it wasn't like that. It because it's iconic now as this yeah. place of. Uh, it's like a ghetto, an alcoholic's ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> The ghettoization, the, the older in those homes, the alcoholic are on George. You know what I mean? We've got everybody divided up. <laughs> in case we have to wipe out any crowd, we'll know where they are. Uh, I, I, I know you get asked this question, but of everyone you've punked, uh, do you have any favorites in particular, of, of, of the people that you've ambushed with your interviews? Oh, uh, you know, I always enjoyed Jean Chrétien, even when I didn't agree with his policies and the cost cutting and stuff like that, because you know, he just was so, well, you know, always knew it didn't matter if you screwed up because he would be funny anyway because he <laughs> was just, he was so secure in some way in his own person. You know, he just didn't give a, you know what they say. Yes. But, um, uh, and so the, in that way, he was a great guy to ambush. Uh, I liked ambushing uh, Ralph Klein because uh, I just thought um, that... You know, I mean, you know, there have been great figures in literature like Scrooge and stuff who said, you know, <laughs> when, when, when they asked him to give some money to the poor and he said, uh, are there no poor houses? Are there no work firms? 
uh, but he didn't actually get his driver to drive him down there at Christmas so he could castigate the poor and throw money at them and call them useless. So, I mean, he was really a, a larger than life, even larger than literature figure, really. I don't know where he is now. What do you make of your friend Sarah Palin? Oh, yes. Well, she's really, I knew, you know, just, I knew that she could not not answer a question because I'm a bit <laughs> like that myself. Right. So I knew if I could only get close enough to her, she'd answer the question. Uh, but, you know, she was surrounded by the Ohio State Police and things. Because you can't ask the right questions. They won't be questioned. They're like Patsy on uh, uh, Absolutely Fabulous. You know, Pat's, <laughs> don't question me, darling. And that's what the writer likes. You know, right. I can't take a question because I guess they're so, I don't know. Never mind. I don't want to. I do want to castigate the right. God knows, they've had their hard times. <laughs> <laughs> but, but are you surprised at the success of Sarah Palin? I mean, seemingly, she's, you know, she's got this book that's brought in millions and millions but, of I mean, dollars. Am I surprised by the success of, you know, Paul Pot? I mean, uh, no, I'm not surprised. I'm not saying that Sarah Palin is like Paul Pot. Right. But You're just making the think, comparison. Oh, my God. Right. How did that happen? Right. How, did they, how did that happen? How did Stalin stay around for so long? <laughs> okay. Of course, Stalin stayed around because he just started killing people, I guess. So. But uh, I mean, so there's nothing surprising about what, but I, I, what I found surprising was that in Cleveland, uh, when we went to the bookstore, mm. uh, which, um, you know, um, there were women who looked like women from Halifax, you know, those kind of, you know, really <laughs> secure, um, uh, uh, soccer, you know, soccer mom thing, you know, in the, in That's the sports That's what women from clubs. Halifax look yeah. like, yeah. In the sports clothes, you know, the Lululemon stuff. And they were just saying, I just love her. She is so refreshing and so refreshingly different than everyone else. Like, in the fact that she lies, even the word the is a lie every time she opens her mouth. Like, what? I don't see it. I guess in a way I would have to say I was, that was nonsense. I am surprised. I am really surprised right. because I can't see. It all seems like, remember when they were saying, who would you want to go out for a beer with? Like, George Bush is who you'd want to go out. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Well, because he was a good old boy. You but, know? He wa but he wasn't, so obviously mm. wasn't. He didn't have the good old boy act down, did he, very well. I mean, Jeff Bridges was playing a good old boy I saw the other night. He seemed to have that down, Pat. Mm. George Bush always seemed like a guy from Yale who was pretending to be a guy from Texas and not doing a very good job of it. Mm. Like you'd like him to go see Lois Brown and get a few acting tips on being a good old boy. Mm on being someone you'd want to go out for Are a we talking with. about George Bush or George B uh, W. Bush? George W. Bush. See, I think the George W. Bush does seem like a good old boy. That's he the doesn't that's to the me thing. at all. He just seemed like he... Uh, it's you know. us or them. You know, you're either yeah. on our side, axis of well, evil. Well, I guess how well, it depends on what you mean by good old boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, he never seemed like anybody I wanted to have. He just seemed full of... Sh <laughs> <laughs> but... Now, I, Can you say that on the radio? <laughs> you've had no experience on CBC. You wouldn't know. Uh, I wouldn't... Uh, and by the way, you weren't comparing Sarah Palin to Paul Potter and, and Stalin. You were just mentioning no, their I names just along with Sarah that, Palin. No, I was that there were yeah. other figures that were more surprising. <laughs> <laughs> right. No one will draw the association. Uh, now, uh, uh, very quickly, I guess I, I want to get to Amelia Kerr. We've, we've heard about this potential talk show that you're doing as well called Broad Appeal. What can you tell us about that? Well, I guess it's a, you know, I, I was hoping to travel across the country because it's such a big country, as you know, yes. that it seems that the more you go out to people, the more they'll, you know, be interested. Like, you know, if you get out to Winnipeg and do a live show in Winnipeg, then people in Winnipeg are interested to see that show. And, and where Absolutely. we are so geographically huge, I, I just would like to do this talk show that just travels all across the country, like goes to Red Deer, does a show there, you know, does whatever's going on in Red Deer, plus whatever's going on in the country, and with all women, like Naomi Klein, say, and me, and, you know, Sarah Palin, <laughs> and uh, I won't be mentioning Paul Pot then, I guess, right, or no. maybe we will, we'll talk about Paul Pot all night, yes. uh, but uh, an afternoon, it's not, it would be an afternoon talk show, and, uh, you know, and it wouldn't be all about, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, it, it would be, you know, the kind of things that we are all interested in. We're not all interested all the time in politics. We're sometimes so interested in is this mascara, happening then? big gal lashes. Right. <laughs> is, is this happening? Which I must say is really clumpy. Right. I mean, they say it isn't, but it is. The big, big, yeah. big gal uh, yeah, lashes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do they have those in the, the, the Halifax women have those? No, 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 no. no. They no. don't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're down to the, what's that place called? The Moon. 
that's open. It's always it, the at the, the palace or the, the Misty Moon. Misty Moon, yeah. right down yeah. the moon. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I've, I've been, they all got on. Down been there, there back in the day. That's back when O'Keefe's was on uh, George Street. That's uh, right. <laughs> Do you, uh, so is this going to happen? Broad appeal sounds like a great I idea. I don't know. It is a great idea. I yeah. know. I don't know if it's going to happen. It's you know up to the uh, up to the powers that be. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that and 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 the movie. And it's such a pleasure to see you here in your really home good province. to see you too. Mary Walsh, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm sorry I said shit. I couldn't. Think of it.